Welcome to the Dashboard Effect Podcast. I'm Brick Thompson. I'm Landon Oaks. Landon, this morning I wanted to talk about a software tool we've been building. It's uh, It uses AI. You could almost call it an AI wrapper, which I hate because uh, the, <laughs> the AI wrappers don't seem to live long in the wild. That may be the case here. We'll see. We're, we're, we built an internal tool called Celeste. Mm -hmm. um, it basically looks at, it takes metadata and will also look at a semantic layer for uh, data sitting in a data lake house that we've built. And then you can have natural language questions for it, and it will create a SQL query based on what it knows about the data structure, either what it infers or what we've told it with metadata, mm -hmm. and return a, a query that then you can execute, and it gives you a table of the data. Our thinking uh, around building this was that it would be quicker sometimes for our engineers to be able to extract data, especially when they're doing quality work, that type of thing, just understanding the client's data. Um, we didn't want to send data to AIs because, uh, you know, there's secu security concerns there, yeah. although they're getting better there. But but we uh, feel fine about getting a SQL query back yeah. uh, and not not exposing data to them at all. It's been an interesting experiment. We've been running it for a number of months now, uh, using it internally, uh, showing it to clients. Uh, we continue to improve it. One of the things we're dealing with right now, though, is we've hit this fork in the road where we've realized that we can either make it great for engineers, technical people, or great for business people, maybe business analysts who aren't super technical, mm -hmm. technical enough that they you know can understand some SQL and so on. Um, and it's a different product for each one. And we've been kind of going down the middle trying to do something for both, but now realizing it's maybe two different tools uh, and, and learning something about development there that, uh, that you need to focus on. All right, where is the, the biggest value? We're not even sure yet, but we're yeah. continuing to play with that. Uh, your team's working on it. Maybe, maybe you could, could comment a little bit about the thinking there. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, we released this internally for our engineers. Um, and one of the interesting things we saw was we had some good adoption right up front uh, that started to taper off. We had one particular guy who used it for several months and then he stopped. Mm. So we, we chatted with him and yeah, kind of his thinking was like, you know, it's cool at first. However, it just doesn't quite fit into my workflow. It seems like a bunch of extra steps when I can just go in and you know, write, write this the myself, right? And so that's kind of that that technical side, right? Like there's cool ways that we could make that fit into his workflow much better. However, it's going to be a lot, lot harder to understand. It's going to look a lot different, right? Versus the business side where right now, you know, we're spitting back a SQL query. Like if you're a business user, do you really need to see the sequel that yeah, type of thing you know right. so it's you know you might actually just want to give them the data yeah in a spreadsheet or something yeah in a spreadsheet yeah or really focus on like visualization type yeah. tools you know so maybe you can spit out some good visuals or whereas you're an engineer you don't really need that right so yeah it's, uh just right in the middle and we need to figure out which way to pivot it maybe it's both maybe it's one we don't, we don't know yet yeah well there is that question if you're going to the business side and you want to produce visuals and so on you are sending data then out to the LLMs. And there are safe ways to do that, and a lot of companies are doing that. Um, we use their APIs. There's a lot of assurances around data security there. Um, you know, we would want to, if we were going to do that for a client, we'd want to get their explicit permission that we're going to, yeah. for example, use the Claude 4 Opus or whatever we're, we're sending it to and that they're okay with the security assurances yeah. there, that type of thing. And that that's kind of the part of the fork in the road too, right? Because right now we do have it create some rough visuals however it doesn't use ai for that and that's yeah. kind of why they're rough right? yeah right so yeah it's like yeah. Where, where do we take it yeah yeah well it's an interesting time i you know ai is becoming more and more important in the work we do everybody i think that's the case gpt5 was just released this week i've been playing mm -hmm. with it for the last i don't know three days or so it's quite impressive it also still has a long way to go yeah it's interesting to see how it's going to impact you know different types of work um, here, uh, in terms of our engineers, we've seen no impact to like, oh, we, we can get twice the work done with the same number of people. It's not that, but we can get higher quality work done, maybe speed things up a little bit, especially around debugging 
or writing really complex SQL or complex DAX. Yeah. Um, I don't know if your guys writing their their uh, Python stuff are using it much, but I think some, um, and it can be helpful there too. Although you know the the hype around vibe coding is definitely pretty hypey. Mm -hmm. If you played with it, it can yeah. help you at the beginning, but it's not going to produce a full full app for you. And sometimes I've I've found in playing with it, sometimes it's just quicker to go in and debug something yourself than to go in the the doom yeah. loop that you can sometimes get in with those things. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, it's been an, an interesting uh, experiment for us. We're going to continue it. The guys have done a great job, super, super nice UI on it. It's mm -hmm. snappy. It, it's cool. It's a, it's a great demo. Uh, but I think we'll keep developing it and try to figure out, as you said, maybe we go both ways for business users and for engineers. Maybe we pick one or the other. I think for now we're sort of on the engineer track. Yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're we're excited to see where it goes. You know, we really want to want to spend more time with it as we can. Um, one of the things that that would be cool to fold in is, you know, Azure's new offering, the um, Agent Factory. Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, Copilot or, Studio, no, AI Foundry. Excuse oh, okay. Me. okay, AI gotcha. Foundry. <laughs> um, so, AI Foundry really was meant to build into wrappers, right? So, like, yeah. you have code, you can now plug it into AI Foundry. It makes it super easy to change models. Um, yeah. You have access to almost all of the models out there. It's pretty impressive. Um, so that, that'd be a really cool thing we can fold it into. And then, of course, you know, there's, there's got to be some awesome ways we can have agents, agents involved as well. So For there's sure. cool possibilities out there. Well, that's, that's a whole other episode is talking yeah. about agentic workflows and so on. Um, yeah, we think uh, that's, a, that's a big part of our future is enabling that and actually building that type of stuff. We're good at the data. The, the foundation, which you have to have right mm -hmm. um, to do a good job with uh, data. Um, so anyway, we'll, we'll have a we'll have a talk about that another day. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. OK, well, just wanted to give an update. We had talked about Celeste a couple of months ago on uh, on our podcast here and want to just give a little update to the listeners on that. Yeah. OK, thanks. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye.